Hi, everybody. It's Tracy Malone from NarcissistAbuseSupport.com. Welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. I have been dedicating my life for about eight years to victims of narcissistic abuse. And you can find my work and everything that I do on my website, NarcissistAbuseSupport.com. It's a global resource, I'm reaching millions of people every year. I'm so proud of it. So if you're looking for resources, please go there. Today, I want to talk to you about something that has to do with getting divorced. And it's the many faces of shame that happen when you're going through a divorce, right? Divorce is an emotional roller coaster. And one of the most difficult things that people can, can face in their lifetime, and it often comes with the shame card. And it can creep in quietly and manifest in ways that you don't even realize. But recognizing the shame is crucial for anyone that's going through this because it's the first step of healing. Now, what I want to establish first is understanding the difference between shame and guilt. And I know we're talking about shame here, but it, it plays in. So give me a second here. So um, guilt is I did something bad. This is the opportunity where we can make amends, apologize to our friend for um, missing their birthday or whatever you did wrong. You can you can make amends. You can get it better, right? I did something bad. Shame, however, is I am bad. It is the fundamental core wound that everything about you is wrong, broken, no, not good enough, right? So I, I want to demystify that we maybe shouldn't be carrying shame. And we'll start with that right off the bat, because shame is I did something bad. And I, I've been through divorce. I know how horrible it is, right? But there's many different reasons and ways that we can hit the shame button, if you would, right? It's just even from the, the, you know, the stigma of divorce. It's social, socially, you know, well known in, in these days. And yet, we feel ashamed simply because it didn't work out, right? And, and they get judged by their friends or their family or even strangers. And then what can happen is people lead themselves into isolation. The pressure of they need help and support right now, but they're so afraid of being judged that shame is blocking them from getting their own support, right? The other way that people can feel shame in a divorce is a deep-seated insecurity of, I don't feel good enough. If I wasn't good enough for my partner or attractive enough or successful enough or not good enough to make our marriage work, then it erodes your self-esteem. And, and this is one of the hardest things about getting through the divorce is because you're hit with this wave of shame and that complicates the entire divorce, right? There's also shame if you think about it over the impact of the children, right? Parents going through this, um, you know, feel guilty, I did something bad for disrupting their children's lives um, and, and feel that they might have failed their children, right? Even if the divorce wasn't their fault, they wish they could have made it work. And so this is the complication that, that again, you you're possibly could hit. The big one I find with my clients and with myself was shame over financial struggles, right? When you have um, a divorce, generally, you know, there's a significant shame, shame coming around the, the money because you're going from a dual income house to a single income. You're dealing with legal fees. You're struggling to maintain a similar lifestyle. Um, and all of this is contributing to this feeling of, of failure, right? The loss of financial security can feel like a loss of control and it can lead to embarrassment and even a reluctance to seek help and support. What I find with people who are having financial struggles in divorce, the shame shuts them down. They stop answering the phone call if, if somebody's calling to pay a bill. The shame cripples you when there's financial difficulties. So, you know, that's a real thing. And if you are struggling with that, um, please remember that the, the financial is, is not your fault. So shame is I did something bad. It's not your fault. It's a situation that you're in, but you can make yourself come out of it and find a way, a different path. My, maybe not the same path, maybe not the same standard of living, but you will find a path and you will be okay in a different realm of financial, you know, worlds between two, two incomes to one. So 
letting go of some of the shame about the finance is going to help you um, heal yourself and, and not let this take you down, right? We can also have shame over like mistakes that we've made. And, and you know, we might dwell on these, ruminate if you would, right? Ruminate on things that you could have done differently. And then you turn it into blame and you turn it into that shame and blame and you are walking around this is why we're not able to, to pull ourselves together during a divorce because the weight of the shame is pulling you down. All of these reasons are things that you must start to look at and acknowledge, I need help with this, right? Um, some people can, if they are the ones maybe making the decision to get a divorce, they may have shame for doing that. They may have shame for wanting to move on and have their own life and everybody's judging them because you were married. Why would you do that? Right. So it's it's a it's a big, big, it's a big, big nut. Um, and I, I want you to know that you can help yourself through this. Um, overcoming this shame and divorce um, is to acknowledge your emotions. Right. Don't bottle up your feelings or try to suppress them. It's okay to feel shame, right? Um, they're part of the healing process. You just don't want to hold it for too long. And you don't want to hold shame that isn't yours to hold. I remember after my last narcissist had me arrested. Those of you who didn't know that, surprise. But um, I held so much shame. I know I didn't do anything wrong. And yet the world was judging me. I held so much shame. I didn't leave my house for six months. And in the end, I learned it wasn't mine to hold. If I had robbed a bank and done something wrong, I would have had shame and then I would have been able to say, I have shame because I did that. That's a bad thing. But I didn't do the bad thing. He did. Um, and so I, I was able to let go of that shame, right? So you're going to be able to overcome it as, as well, right? So get some help and, and start self-compassion. What I find and, and hear all the time in my clients and in my groups is, we say things to ourselves, and their negative beliefs, negative thought patterns, and, you know, saying I'm not good enough. I used to say when I was going through my divorce, I was a two-time loser. That was self-abandonment. That was lack of self-compassion. It was my own joking way to make fun of it so that I'd make fun of myself because before other people did, I, I was poking jokes at myself. I was beating myself up. And that's what I want you to encourage to not do, not let your negative thoughts come in here and hold on to, I'm not good enough, or I'm a failure because I had two marriages, or I'm a failure because, you know, this happened. A lot of people going through a narcissistic divorce also hold a lot of shame for staying. Well, if it was abuse, why did you stay? You're going to get that from your friends. Well, if it was abuse, like, why didn't you ever tell anyone? We always thought they were really nice, right? It's going to come and you're going to have to face these things and you're going to have to figure out what is yours to hold and what is not yours to hold. Shame is a really big, painful emotion. But if you can figure out which ones you have to hold and which ones are not yours to hold, and forgive yourself for anything that you're holding against yourself. So if you are holding against yourself that you should have, could have, would have done anything, can you let go of that? Can you have self-compassion to love yourself, to let that go? This is Tracy Malone. I am here if you need me. I welcome you to visit my website. Please like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I always forget to ask. Thank you so much and I'll see you again next time.